Hello, welcome to another video of event-based robot vision. And today we're going to take a look at uh, event generation models. So we will review the original one that we have seen already in previous videos, that it's pixel-wise, that it's non-linear and it doesn't include noise. And then we will mostly spend the video talking about the linearized version using brightness constancy. At the end, we will just uh, give some uh, highlights about more realistic uh, event generation models, which they basically incorporate noise in some way, um, with some probabilistic formulation of the event generation. Okay, so the, the original, the simplest event generation model that we have talked about is that an event is triggered at a pixel if, uh, as we can see here, the log intensity at, uh, at current time minus the log intensity at previous time that an event was generated. So this factor here, then this is a step of predefined size C. And if this occurs, then uh, an event is triggered, whether it's positive or negative. So on or off depends on whether there was a brightness increase or brightness decrease. And this is clear, right? We have seen this uh, before, but basically in the, in the light, which is this black uh, line that arrives at a photoreceptor at one single pixel, this is for single pixel X, then is converted, is transduced into this uh, stream of asynchronous events, on and off. So the equation on top is basically the simplest, uh, maybe also uh, idealized event generation model. Basically, it says that the, an event is generated if there is a difference of two uh, log intensities equal to step size uh, C. Okay, so when we talk about event generation, we are interested in uh, what are the causes uh, behind the events being triggered. So what causes the events? And we know that DBS pixels, they measure uh, brightness changes. We have just seen uh, this equation, and this is also called temporal contrast. Um, well, these changes, they could be due to the fact that light is flickering. If there is a variable light, even if uh, nothing is happening on the scene, but we are just changing the light, then events will be triggered um, on, the, on the pixels, right? If we are changing ambient light, then if pixels, uh, all pixels in the image uh, will trigger events. If we are just have a, a so point source, like an LED, then maybe only the particular pixels that are viewing that LED will be changing light, and therefore they will be generating um, events. But um, assuming that constant that we have constant illumination, what uh, the reason uh, triggering the events? What's causing the events? Well, we have seen also this with some previous videos, and basically the answer is that events are caused by moving edges in the scene. Can we say more? Uh, do we observe uh, anything special uh, about? Uh, how events should be moving to be triggering events? Well, let's take a look at the following spatial patterns of events. Imagine that we have a checkerboard and we are waving a checkerboard in front of an event camera, such as the DBS, and we move it diagonally in front of the camera, diagonally with respect to the, the checkers patterns. Well, if we accumulate the events for a short period of time, um, we will get this kind of event frame, and we know that the grayscale means that there was no event triggered in the last few milliseconds. Um, white means that there were positive events, and black means there were negative events. Yeah. And we observe more or less it's uh, almost like an edge detector that the events, which are these white and black regions, they are triggered at uh, around the regions where there are edges in the in the pattern. Okay, that's fine. But what happens if we move the checkerboard in a different direction? Well, then suddenly the spatial patterns uh, that we observe in this uh, event frame, uh, they are completely different, right? Because now suddenly we are missing the vertical edges. We are only uh, um, shown or we only see horizontal edges, these uh, 
white and black ones. So it would seem that the events, um, they have a dependency with the motion, right? And that's basically what we are going to, to show next. So let's, let's show how to go from the uh, temporal contrast condition that we have seen about how events are being triggered to a more uh, spatial one. So we've seen that an event is triggered is there is a brightness increment of predefined size C, either plus or minus. And then for a short time, if we consider just a single pixel, then this increment in brightness can be approximated uh, to first order, you know, by Taylor series, then you can see that this is basically a slope times the how much you move in horizontally. So, yeah, this is nothing more than first order Taylor expansion with the partial of the brightness with respect to time. Well, then the next thing that we do is that we use uh, uh, something called the constant brightness assumption that says that. Um, Brightness is uh, yeah, locally preserved, and there is a relationship between the spatial and temporal derivatives of uh, the brightness. And that's basically saying that the total derivative of brightness uh, with respect to time is uh, locally zero along some trajectories that are here displayed as x dot. But basically this equation, uh, the constant brightness assumption, um, they it tells us a relationship between the on the left the temporal derivative and on the right the spatial derivative of the brightness and basically it says that the temporal derivative of partial derivative of brightness with respect to yes the, this is equal to uh, minus the spatial derivative times um, a velocity and this velocity is basically uh, giving you the, the direction and the amount of motion. Well, the next thing that we do is that we substitute these equations into the top one, and then basically we arrive at a linearization that says that the brightness increment on the top, which is equal to plus minus c, can be approximated to first order You're using, say, Taylor expansion using the uh, uh, constant brightness assumption to what is written here on the right-hand side. So it says that this brightness increment is caused by a brightness gradient, and this first term, that it's moving with a velocity v on the image plane over a displacement, and this velocity times delta time, this is basically a displacement in the, on the image plane. And moreover, it's telling us that the, the relationship between them is that there is also a dot product, right? this dot product here which basically says the following. Um, there are some limiting or extreme cases, right? If the, gradient, if the brightness gradient is perpendicular to the motion, basically if here two vectors, the vector v and the vector the gradient of the brightness, they are perpendicular, um, no event is generated. And if the, these two vectors are parallel, so the brightness gradient is parallel to the motion, then for this to be a constant c, um, the delta t that achieves that such a such a c is, is the shortest time. So events are generated uh, fastest, as opposed to, for example, if these two vectors are not parallel. Okay, let's take a look with an example. Um, let's review these two conditions. The first one is if the brightness gradient is perpendicular to the motion, and for that we will see that it happens here in one of these this point on the image plane, which is also depicted on the right, right? So here we actually see that there are no events. And why is that? Well, the brightness gradient, uh, oops, here is depicted, it should be the other direction, going from black to white. And the velocity is going down because we are moving the checkerboard down. Um, so basically these two are perpendicular and therefore, um, there is no event generated. And then the second condition, the, the brightness gradient is parallel to the motion, um, then an event is, is generated. 
and that we see on this second point on the image plane where we see now the, the brightness gradient that is going, yes, from black to bright. So it's going down this green vector and the motion is still going down. Um, so these two vectors are parallel and therefore the dot product is non-zero. So an event is generated, no matter if it's uh, the fastest or not. Yeah, that's what we see here on the right. So in conclusion, for constant illuminations, events are caused by moving edges. That's uh, what we have shown with this linearized model. And when we accumulate the events pixel-wise, what we see is the trace of the edge as it moved and generated event, uh, such as an image like this one, right? This, these white and black lines, if we accumulate for a longer time, they are not motion blur. The events, they don't have they have almost no motion blur, right? What we are just plotting is this trace of the edge as it moved and it was generating the events. And some methods use these linearized models, other methods do not. Finally, let's take a look at a more realistic event generation model. And basically what we will do is that we take the original event generation model, which is this, and on the right-hand side, if it was a constant plus or minus e, and what we, will, we do is that we replace this constant with the probability distribution, such as this one. So instead of having a constant c, what we will have is we can model it using some bell-shaped unimodal probability distribution centered around some value that now that c, instead of being constant, is uh, basically the average or the model distribution. And why do we model um, this generation like that? Well, there is some evidence in the, some measurements in the uh, DDS 2008 paper where they, they do some experiments and they, they change the, the contrast threshold and they measure how many events happen per pixel and per edge. And they basically obtain these kind of histograms, these uh, empirical um, distributions. Basically they, they say that it's reasonably unimodal in uh, control conditions. So uh, this is what it's measured, and this is on the right what it's modeled. And that's basically the easiest probabilistic, uh, the easiest, more realistic event generation model that uh, we could think of. Just replacing the, the contrast threshold uh, with the probability distribution. And there are other more complex ones that basically replace um, we have a bit more complex uh, distribution uh, and there are even others that consider that it, this does not depend only on a single variable that it depends on multiple variables such as the the refractory period which is something that we haven't seen yet but it's the, the kind of like a blind time uh, of the of the dvs pixel ever after which uh, every event is generated Okay, so the references for this part on event generation are really in the section 2.4 on the survey paper, and then taking a look at papers on that use event noise in some way. Either they measure it, like this 2008 paper, or they use it for modeling, such as these other papers that we will discuss. Thank you very much.